If you've ever tried to climb in the ranked ladder in Street Fighter V, you'll quickly notice that a big problem in getting to the next level is those online Wi-Fi warrior cans who just mash random buttons. You'll quickly notice that a big problem in getting to that next level is knowing what you need to improve on. Of course, you could have just not dropped your combo or you could have anti-aired better, but more often than not, there are aspects of your gameplay that you need to improve upon that you might not even be aware of. And this happens at every single rank, each with their own unique struggles. So today, I'll be going over one tip per rank to help you improve and get closer to your rank goals in Street Fighter V. If you're new here, I'm not Johnny Kim, and in this channel, one of my biggest priorities is helping you improve and achieve your rank goals. So if you're looking for more content that helps you with that, be sure to subscribe. Before we go on, I want to put a disclaimer here that improvement is always more important than simple ranked points, and even more important than winning tournament matches. In the words of Daigo Umahara in his book, Continued growth should be your goal, rather than just winning. If you put enough effort into improving yourself as a fighting game player, winning will simply follow as the fruits of your labor. However, for many of you, reaching a certain rank is your goal for Street Fighter V, and improvement is simply a means to that end goal. And that is a totally legitimate, fulfilling goal to have in Street Fighter V. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. I'm only mentioning this bit about improvement because improvement is what will get you results long term and what you should be looking for instead of cheap tactics like picking dark colored costumes and dark stages. Also, the tips I'm about to provide are not limited to the rank I assigned them to. Like if I say for bronze players, you should learn how to anti-air better and you're a plat player who always gets jumped in on, you should probably learn how to anti-air better. And of course the same goes vice versa. I assign ranks to each tips because your rank helps give me a gauge of how strong you may be and what you probably need to improve on. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. First, let's start with the rookies out there. There's not much to say here other than focus on the basics, which are things like your easy anti-airs, your basic combos, and how to block and what moves your character has available, like the standing medium kick which is great to use in neutral because it reaches really far, or this forward moving punch that leads into your dragon punch as Ryu. There's really no hidden sauce or open secret in the FGC at this rank. You just need to learn how to play the game correctly in its most basic form, and you should be able to get out of this rank. Check out Geef's Gym, a great resource for beginners if you want to learn how to play Street Fighter the right way. Next, we have the bronze players, which is probably the majority of you. My biggest tip for you guys is to wait, block, and let your opponents hang themselves. People at this rank will either constantly jump at you or throw out random moves that are very punishable on block. If you can consistently punish your opponent for doing either of these things, your opponents will just be gifting you free damage everywhere. If you're having trouble punishing a certain move, go into training mode and practice the timing to punish it by having the dummy throw out the move and then block for an extended period of time. You'll eventually get a feel for what moves are punishable. Once you start picking up the free damage that your opponent leaves everywhere, you'll quickly climb out of bronze. Also, if you haven't already, go watch Brian F's video on how to get out of bronze. He goes into much greater depth and provides more tips on what to focus on. He does say not to take your offense and pressure, which I don't agree with, but he is the consistent top 8 NLBC player here, so I can't really say much. We have the next biggest crowd up next, the silver players. The individual problems at this rank start to differentiate a lot more from player to player, but one constant thing I notice at this rank is players tend to misuse their V-trigger activation and duration, and it's such an easy fix. This is one of the cases where there kind of is an open secret that will immediately help you win more matches at this rank, assuming you don't do it already. So most people at this rank will just activate V-Trigger randomly, or do it in a way that is straight up punishable. And when they are in V-Trigger, they just do random moves hoping their opponent gets hit by it. It's like they've been given so much power that they just don't know what to do anymore and they just start mashing. It's either that or they just waste their V-Meter on something that doesn't help them at all. For the first problem, the V-Trigger activation, most characters can just do sweep into V-Trigger activation and get like 10 plus frames, and if you're not aware, 10 plus frames is a lot of plus frames. I have a whole video that goes over this really simple, easy V-Trigger activation, so if you want to hear more about it, check out that video. For the second problem, you'll need to look up what your character can do while in V-Trigger, but honestly, you just need to find one good thing and just do that. For Akuma, I'll just do this one V-Trigger air fireball loop for free pressure and if they get hit, they basically die. Once you clean up and improve your V-Trigger game, you'll be able to climb out of this rank with not too much difficulty. Next, we have the gold players. Here is where most people have their basics down and they have a general game plan and strategy to beat their opponents. However, most people's defense at this level are quite lacking, especially in Street Fighter V, where offense is heavily more rewarded than defense. 
So, the best tip I can give you guys is to learn and or develop a strong, polished offensive flowchart that puts your opponent into legitimately hard to block mix-ups and positions that let you condition them. If you can apply a lot of pressure on your opponent when you get some offense going, you'll find more and more of your opponents cracking and giving you free rounds. These situations and mix-ups you put them in don't have to be huge or elaborate though. They can be as simple as feinting a tick throw into a shimmy to condition your opponent to take more throws so that you can throw your opponent 2-3 to three times later on. The important thing about the structured offense is that it helps you quickly gather information about your opponent, which allows you to more effectively condition your opponent and exploit their defensive behaviors. You'll find your opponent's health bar quickly start to melt once you can get inside their heads while on offense. If you want an example of this, go check out Brian S video on how he developed a throw loop game for Balrog. Now we have the Platinum players. The absolute best tip I can give you guys is to be really mindful about your decision making. Is your opponent really close to getting stunned? Then you should be really aggressive. You can afford to take risky advances like dashing and jumping at them because the risk reward is now heavily favored towards you. Are you at about half health and stun? Then you should probably just take a throw if it'll end your opponent's pressure on you. If you decide to try to tech the throw and you get punished for it, you may get stunned or put in a situation where the next hit will stun and kill you. Whereas taking the throw results in a bit of damage and stun, but nowhere near a threat on your life. Are you at full meter and just landed a combo starter? You should probably look to spend some of it, whether it's just one bar to get some extra corner carry and stun, or if it's all of it to quickly gain the life lead. You can build a full CA in just one round, so there's no need to let the meter burn a hole in your pocket. You get the point. These decisions will help you make the most of every situation presented to you, and position you better for victory with every correct choice made. These decisions have to be made in split-second situations, so you will get some of them wrong. However, making and sticking to a decision is incredibly valuable, even if the decision is wrong, because you quickly learn what the right and wrong choices are. As your decision making improves, so will your win rate and your rank. Finally, we have the diamond and up players, and I also fall into this category. Obviously, I don't have much authority here, and the problems someone in this category might face can range from character matchups to learning how to do single hit confirms. I can only explain something I've done in my gameplay that has shown me some success, and that is to respect my opponent's offensive pressure. This ranges from taking a throw to just not mashing randomly when I think it might work. This also looks like being okay with not converting a double jab combo while on defense, because at least I have alleviated a lot of pressure, and because of that, my odds of winning that round have improved greatly. Take that as you will, but also at this level, singular tips stop being as valuable as intentional review of your gameplay and discovering your own specific shortcomings and ways to deal with those shortcomings. If you're looking for someone to watch your replays and give you some feedback, or just want to hang out with some people who are also trying to improve at Street Fighter V, come check out my stream at twitch.tv slash notjohnnykim. I don't stream too regularly, but if I do stream, it will most likely be on Sundays. Comment down below if you found these tips useful, or if they're complete bogus and the online kens are truly the reason you're stuck in bronze. Subscribe if you want to see more educational content like this, and follow me on my other socials. See you next video.